opportunities and challenges uh, that we have ahead in supporting Syrian businesses in Turkey to ensure their sustainability and potential to create new jobs for both refugees and host community members. Uh, for, the, for this event that we are organizing in the framework of World Refugee Day, we have invited all the parties from Turkish and Syrian private sector, livelihoods partners, IFIs, governmental institutions, and we want all parties to be involved in the discussion today for, fruit, for fruitful outcomes. We will hear and speak uh, Turkish, Arabic and English, uh, and even though we may see the we may see the uh, the language as a barrier, we also believe that it provides us the cultural diversity. So now I'll give the floor to Gural Checker, president of uh, Ingev, uh, for his uh, opening speech. He couldn't be able to be with us today, uh, but he sent a video message. So uh, please, let's see it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello everyone, we are going through a lot in respect of refugee programs in Turkey. I refer to them as refugees. I know that they are people under temporary protection in terms of their status. Across the world, Turkey hosts the largest population of refugees. The most important thing about this is that since the very first day they arrived in Turkey, refugees lived not in isolated border camps, but inside the host community together with the community. This is something to appreciate. However, this further complicates the issue both for host community and Syrians and makes urgent a lot of additional economic and moral issues for both. Social protection was and is still an important situation over time as it was evident that the situation of COE's existence will be a permanent reality. Sustainable livelihood became a priority Turkey facilitated this process by granting many fundamental rights under the scope of temporary protection status, starting business work as tradesmen or self-employed work with a work permit are the main elements in this backdrop. Some fundamental rights have already been granted concerning financial coverage and access to the supply chain. There are still 15,000 officially established companies. We estimate that the Syrian entrepreneurs to be around 100,000, including the tradesmen and craftsmen. 132,000 have been granted a work permit. However, we are not sure about how many this number actually covers since it is necessary to renew the permit annually. The rate of unregistered work in Turkey is 34% and the rate is even higher among Syrians. For many practical reasons, Syrian entrepreneurs prefer their own people to be employed and language being the most obvious reason. Entrepreneurship is the highest priority area to be supported in the field of sustainable livelihood. This will support Turkish economy and also export. The pandemic hit hard, especially the SMEs. Syrians were more severely impacted with losses in turnover and jobs up to 45%. Small and medium scale enterprises, SMEs, were supported by the emergency support program for SMEs implemented in collaboration with the UNDP, which has been critical in this respect. Syrian businesses were given grants to develop digital infrastructure and first cash assistance. Training support was given to use the digital infrastructure. Practical training was provided to inform them about how to access financial assistance and public funds given during the pandemic. Women entrepreneurs were prioritized and we had more women entrepreneurs than expected. I think we should improve the efficiency of these programs. It is important to avoid duplication, efficiency in the use of overhead, especially including outside of Turkey and efficiency of training courses should always be ensured. SME emergency support program touched the lives of beneficiaries 100%. I would like to congratulate the UNDP Turkey team and INGEV team. We have done a lot. We have done a lot uh, in order to 
achieve the objectives. We have done a lot, some of which were emotionally hard sometimes. Those who contributed and worked for this program are the invisible heroes, but there is a long way still to cover. There is still a lot to do by showing due diligence to financial coverage and also the improvement of social cohesion. We have to consider citizenship on a gradual basis, eliminate barriers, facilitate process for work permits, at least extend the period of expiry and also uh, provide support concerning reaching out to um, markets abroad. Being a refugee is the most difficult thing in the world, and we have experienced this uh, widely in Turkey. But uh, this is not an issue only for Turkey, for the whole humanity and also concerning the number of those countries involved in the civil war in Syria, we can understand why this is not a problem of only one country. These efforts in Turkey should be stronger and we need a stronger and more sustainable international support. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to this program. I would like to wish you a fruitful and successful panel. Thank you very much. Kind regards. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Raul Bey. <laughs> Please convey our thanks uh, to him, uh, our Ingev colleagues. And now I would like to give the floor to uh, Deputy Resident Representative of UNDP Turkey Country Office, Grob Kojimato, for his opening speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ezgi. Good evening, Yalman Said. Uh, good day, uh, respective uh, government officials, the livelihood sector partners, uh, distinguished Turkish and Syrian private sector representatives. It is an honor to make a speech in a week of World Refugees Day that we all celebrate yes, celebrated yesterday together with Father's Day. In 1971, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees literally turned Albert Einstein into their poster child. The photo was accompanied by the ingenious slogan, a bundle of belongings isn't the only thing a refugee brings to his new country and home. Today we gather to discuss business environment in Turkey, opportunities, partnership, challenges, competition, export, employment, and many more and beyond. Supporting access to decent jobs to foster local resilience has always been one of UNDP main priorities. Hosting countries have coped with the direct consequences to refugee arrivals and presence by extending social services and assistance to address the specific needs of refugees. The response of Turkish institutions to open up the labor market to refugees and foster their access not only to employment, but also entrepreneurship is a global example of successfully making the link between humanitarian assistance and development goals. It demonstrates how refugees can be successfully included into national and local services and contribute actively to the local development and economies. On our end, we are fully aware of the challenges that Turkish and Syrian private sector have been facing since COVID-19 pandemic. Given that the micro-enterprises and SMEs remain the main employers for vulnerable groups, including refugees, Business development support is necessary to help them expand their workforce while structural investment in industrial zones take place. SMEs operating based on unproductive manufacturing modalities are a common feature of the Turkish economy. As UNDP, with our resilience-based approach, we support innovation and productivity through model factories and innovation centers that we have built in eight provinces to create decent and sustainable jobs. On the other hand, since only 13 of the Syrian businesses are aware of incentives available for SMEs, we work with our valuable partners like INGEF to increase awareness, engage Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Business Association for more inclusive service and refer them to the available resources of information, partnership and financing. We believe that business development services could quickly help business expand, as one third of the Syrian businesses currently do not have business plans or a marketing plan. And significant part doesn't use any marketing tools and instruments. These conditions show there is a considerable room for support to Syrian businesses, which could in turn significantly boost employment 
and economic growth while addressing root causes in Turkish SMEs that prevent them creating more and sustainable jobs. We are also aware that language remain as a barrier for Syrian employees while adapting to the working environment in local enterprises and for the Syrian entrepreneurs while navigating in bureaucracy, law, regulations, but also the opportunities and support that they could benefit in Turkey. In this respect, UNDP has developed Turkish language trainings with blended learning modality in cooperation with the Ministry of National Education that gives much more flexibility and allows self-paced learning to the beneficiaries. Recently, we have also developed online training modules on life skills at workplace and career development in three languages, Turkish, Arabic, and English to support both employees and employers to better receive and provide orientation on Turkish business culture and environment. We believe language skills are critical to boost the potential of Syrian businesses. And one of the areas that could be invested more is the development of flexible and targeted language courses for business persons. Nice music, by the way. The impact of COVID-19 has been hard on everyone. And in the upcoming sessions, our colleagues will give you a clear picture on the context that we are working and as UNDP. We believe that following areas still need investment to create sustainable and new businesses and jobs for all. These are supporting integrated structural investment at the local level are needed, particularly in industrial, manufacturing, and agricultural value chains. Supporting small businesses to formalize existing jobs to ensure decent work conditions for refugees, appropriate access to income, and fair competition between job seekers. Enhancing the skills of refugees so that they become employable option for large Turkish companies while supporting host communities equitably. I need to underline the fact that the projects being implemented in the livelihood sector target host community members and refugees equally. And what we achieve in Turkey is actually a good example for humanitarian development nexus. And every project, every support that targets local and Syrian businesses counts and will create win-win situation. That's also why we need to honest discussion, business to business, to figure out how and to what extent this support needs to be provided to ensure self-reliance of refugees and host community members, as well as creating economies resilient to the crisis, disasters, and pandemics, since hereafter it is the reality of our daily lives. Thanks again for your participation and wish you a fruitful event on behalf of whole UNDP Turkey team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scrub. I'm very sorry for the unfortunate interruption. Uh, thank you for your valuable inputs. Uh, now uh, we can move on with the uh, first session. Uh, so, um, and we will switch to Turkish. So if you need to uh, nece make necessary changes, please do that uh, from your interpretation channels. Uh, in this session, UNDP and INGEV, I mean, we are going to share our experience and we are going to share our uh, experience and recommendations with the service providers. And afterwards, we are going to remind you of the context and the environment that we have been working in. So we have a video that we would like to present you with to provide you with more information about what we have done so far and then we will have the discussion session thank you syria crisis response and resilience portfolio livelihoods pillar Supporting Syrian businesses, millions of Syrians have been forced to flee their homes since 2011, seeking safety as refugees in Lebanon, Turkey, Jordan and beyond. In the 11th year of the crisis, Turkey remains 
Turkey remains as the country hosting the largest refugee population in the world and represents good practices to strengthen resilience of Syrians through participation to the labor market as employees and entrepreneurs. UNDP Turkey Syria crisis response and resilience portfolio and INGEV have been providing business development services to Syrian owned enterprises and Syrian entrepreneurs. The ratio of Syrians who don't intend to return to Syria have increased from 16.7% to 51.8% between 2017 to 2019. Teşekkürler. Şimdi ben Hatice Çağrı. Thank you very much. Myself, Hatice Çağrı and Abdul, we will be in this session and we are going to deliver a presentation. And uh, as we have considered, I mean, the context, we are going to explain what we have tried to do and uh, what we think should be done. So if you have any questions, you can also write to us from the chat. So since 2019, UNDP and INGEV have been providing our services to Syrian companies and financial consultancy, legal consultancy and consultancy on technical aspects and also business development, marketing integration to marketing chains have been undertaken. Ingev, as you already know, has a consultancy service and they can reach information concerning Arabic and other services that they are in need. So, uh, so as uh, June, this is going to be completed. So COVID-19 uh, was an opportunity to review the services we are providing and that helped us to redesign what we are offering. In this respect, as you have already seen in the context, so Syrian companies and entrepreneurs uh, needed some support concerning digitization. And due to the economic reason, uh, some of them needed some emergency support. So some small 
grants have been provided to the SMEs in order to uh, fulfill the basic needs. So on the other hand side, we also develop training modules, which are also in Arabic, and these are about digital marketing and use of digital communication tools. So as you um, might consider, Hatice is going to now take the floor to give us some numbers. Uh, so since 2019, we have been collaborating with INGEV in this project and we had the COVID-19 pandemic and we took up other aspects. So in the first part, uh, we have seen that tax regulations and also arrangements related to COVID-19 and also trademark and patent were among the subjects that we received the highest number of questions. So Syrian entrepreneurs and SMEs had the problem in this specific area so they had problems in these specific areas and we try to address these areas 605 uh, consultancy services were provided and 420 beneficiaries were reached in Hatay, Adana, Istanbul, Mersin, which are densely populated provinces, and uh, there were some job opportunities uh, for uh, refugees in these cities so the purpose of our project is to create jobs and we have reached 1,985 people and some of them were directly placed into jobs and some of them were placed into jobs in companies created as a result of this project and some of them were originally informal but they became formal thanks to this project and some of them received consultancy services from us and also um, these are the people who were placed in jobs so this is the total number we have reached which is very satisfactory for us i talked about businesses being established 145 businesses were established and half of them are um, limited companies so you can see unfortunately 14 of those people who established businesses are women and uh, looking at the beneficiaries there are only 10 percent of beneficiaries who are women so uh, you can see that there are some details which will be shared by our colleagues from INGEP, but it is important to underline that only 12% uh, of the companies established were closed down. And we think that this is a good ratio, COVID-19, where there were lots of economic disadvantages, despite the challenges, 88 percent of the companies established under the project are still active. And also uh, the Syrian entrepreneurs uh, have a total capital investment of 7.7 .7 million euros. So that is also very important to bear in mind. Thank you very much, Hatice. So uh, under the scope of European Union project, we had some objectives for establishment of new companies, but it was hit hard by COVID-19. And we had a stagnation process for a long time. And uh, the entrepreneurs started showing the tendency to start businesses again. With INGE, we also, under the scope of our collaboration, wanted to evaluate the uh, services in terms of how efficient and how beneficial they have been. So Akul is now going to share with us the feedback from the beneficiaries. As Hatice stated, 12% uh, is the ratio uh, of the closed down companies. This is due to COVID-19 and of course, uh, penetration into the market of the new companies should be taken into consideration. And 12% is not a very high ratio. And you can see that there are some results which I would like to share with you. Majority of the companies established are in the services sector, 41%, and also in the manufacturing sectors, we can see a high number of businesses established. Depending on the 
feedback, 84% are satisfied and 69% have reached their uh, expectations and 66% want to expand, grant their businesses. And under the scope of the project, they received some financial consultancy and 69% uh, stated that they are satisfied with these consultancy services. So uh, where are the uh, mini grant packages were spent on? So we reached 70 Syrians. Of course, our priority was women, disabled, and also tourism, restaurant, uh, SMEs, and also SMEs working in the retail sector. In terms of women entrepreneurs, the number is high. 50 women entrepreneurs and 20 men entrepreneurs received this grant. And uh, based on the feedback about where this was used, they use this most of the time to pay their tax debt. And they also bought the equipment that was needed for the business. And these are the two main areas where they were, they were using the grant. 75% of the enterprise owners uh, would like to receive more information concerning our grant and other opportunities. So uh, regarding work permit support, so only 8% of those supported were either laid off or quit their job. So for two years period of time, this is not a really very high Ratio. So what is satisfactory is that 90% of the employees still continue working in the workplaces, which underlines sustainability, which is very, very important. So in the survey for the employers regarding employment of refugees, there is a high willingness. So uh, a, more than 80% want to employ refugees. So job satisfaction is 94%, which is also very high. And for the next years regarding employment of refugees, uh, there are also um, some 93% of employers providing a positive feedback, which is also very good, very satisfactory for us. Thank you very much, Akgül. As underlined by Akgül, work permit regarding the reimbursement of work permit fees and regarding the application processes and handling of the processes, we also provided support. So this support provided has already worked. And also uh, the steps taken have provided useful results. Maybe among uh, the participants, there are also other institutions and organizations given similar incentives. They can share with us the experience. And despite COVID-19, uh, we should provide support in this work permit area. So we watched a video and also we shared with you the context and also the the modes of service and feedback, there are some recommendations that we have already prepared for you because there are some new partners and there are some new public institutions which are offering support to Syrian entrepreneurs and also Syrian companies, Syrian businesses. So there is one area concerning dissemination of information and ensuring coordination. So, uh, I would like to talk about uh, the challenges regarding uh, financing. Some companies had some uh, funding support challenges. So if we offer them more information, they can really benefit from that. And uh, so far, Syrian companies have been supported by institutions and there will be some new funds available. Some credits and grants have already been provided. So these institutions and organizations should cooperate further, which is important. <laughs> Uh, incentivizing work permits might be a good idea. ILO has, I, ILO has nice uh, projects in this respect. So through such incentivizing projects, we can uh, continue supporting the businesses. And this is not only supporting them financially, but also supporting them with information sessions and awareness raising about how to apply for work permits. I'd like to give the floor over to Akgil again. Thank you very much. Well, what we have here is another recommendation as a, about, about the fact that Syrian SMEs have limited relations with the uh, chambers of commerce and industry and 
as I said before, Syrian SMEs, and they're not so much affiliated to the business association. So their relations uh, can be improved, we believe that, so that they will be engaged in certain networking. And we believe that this way, uh, uh, interaction between them two could be increased. And another issue here would be supporting agricultural agricultural and livestock projects. We believe Syrians in Turkey have solid skills in agriculture and raising livestock as many arrive from rural areas of Syria. So there's a high potential for, for livelihoods and employment if tailor-made supports can be given in these uh, sectors. And the thing is, um, we believe that areas uh, in which they can they can put to use their skills uh, could be could be uh, increased. Barriers to renting and buying agricultural land may also be lifted to help Syrians who want to work in these sectors. We thought. And another area is to explore export potential, especially business opportunities with Arabic-speaking countries, and we uh, can see that many Syrian-owned SMEs have shown willingness and capacity to export to Arabic-speaking countries, and especially um, online platforms, increased online platforms, incre increased online fairs, and uh, increased digital, um, uh, digital, increased support to digital tools may be, may be a good idea. Thank you very much, Akhil. With the support of UNDP Bangladesh, uh, we have this uh, freelancers platform. I don't want to talk about the platform itself, but I'd like to talk about how freelancing may be a good potential for livelihoods of the people. And the thing is, people are encountering certain uh, barriers, especially Syrian freelancers. They're finding it difficult to have access to job opportunities. But the thing is, Around the world, there are some freelance job opportunities where Arabic speaking is required. So we are setting up a platform which can combine these two. And hopefully, hopefully those Syrian freelancers uh, will find better job skills. So this is not the area of industry uh, or manufacturing, actually. So digital skills digital skills and also freelancing skills will be needed and Arabic speaking will be needed. And we believe that we can focus on this platform for freelancers, especially considering the youth, this may be a good idea. And this freelancers platform will be opened up to the Turkish citizens in some time, we believe. I'd like to give the floor to Charda. I'd like to underline social, social enterprises. You know, social enterprises have strong potential to help livelihoods of disadvantaged populations such as refugees. And, you know, currently there is no clear legal framework for such enterprises in Turkey. So creating, I'm sorry, I have a background noise, says the speaker. The thing is, cre creating this legal framework will be absolutely important. And additionally, cooperatives stand out as an important model for entrepreneurship and solidarity. And we believe that cooperatives, they stand out as important models for entrepreneurship and solidarity. So clarifying legal frameworks for such enterprises, including tax benefits and participation of refugees in partnership and obtaining work permits, and these all can significantly help livelihoods of target populations, we believe. This is how it seems. And another issue uh, would be would be transition strategy from ESSN to livelihoods and its implementation. We believe that this is crucially important um, for participation in the labor market and also social protection. And lastly, what I want to cover is the high potential sectors for Syrian owned SMEs. There are certain uh, high potential sectors for these SMEs that need to be identified, including tech sector, IT sector, manufacturing sector, and food sector. These are the sectors that we believe have high potential of employment for, uh, for Syrian owned SMEs. So uh, sector specific incentives may help them grow their businesses and increase employment of Syrians and Turkish citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charu. 
So we can't go without talking about business language training. So as UNDP, uh, we have this we have this blended uh, learning models. We are providing Turkish language courses and we reach out to more than 50,000 people within two years of time. But what we see in the field is that uh, there, there is a need for business specific Turkish language uh, courses. And, you know, uh, these courses actually had to be hampered because of the uh, weekend curfews. You can do uh, evening courses or weekend courses, but still, the thing is, more flexible more flexible models are needed for business language trainings, and we still need to focus on this area. Akil? Well, the thing is, integration into the domestic market is absolutely important in this respect. You know, when it comes to Syrian-owned SMEs, they tend to do business with Syrians, we have to uh, underline once again, which does not really contribute to social cohesion while dep depriving the people of growth opportunities. This is why uh, them coming together, Syrian owned SMEs coming out, uh, together with Turkish customers uh, is so much important. So we need to, we need development of supply chains in this respect. Well, we may also adopt a different perspective here. Uh, Syrian uh, SMEs may not be targeted by the Turkish citizens. This may also create a bar barrier. And next one is the capacity building support to SMEs. In this respect, uh, uh, financial and legal consultancy uh, would be so much necessary to help SMEs to navigate in legal and financial business environment. This, uh, we believe, is also an important point to be discussed. And access to finance is another issue. Uh, loans and grant programs, which are tailored to match the needs of Syrian-owned SMEs and Turkish companies who employ refugees and other disadvantaged groups are needed. So as an alternative, innovative banking and finance tools, such as microfinancial institutions, invoice factoring and user mobile wallets are needed. Hatice, over to you again. As you know, negative impacts of COVID-19 on the economy created loss of labor force and loss of employment. And especially entrepreneurship and labor force participation were already quite low among Syrian women in Turkey, Syrian women and women in general. In this respect, we believe that employment levels were quite poor uh, among Syrian women under COVID-19. That's why we believe more special and targeted programs are needed to support Syrian women entrepreneurs and employees to maintain and grow their livelihood opportunities. I think we're done, right? We're finished. Thank you very much, everyone. Hopefully this was a useful session, hopefully. And you're lagging behind the program today. And so with your permission, I'd like to move on with the next session. Well, the thing is, we do not want to do all the talking. That's why in the next session, they would like to, we would like to listen to the representatives of the Syrian business world, Syrian businesses. We believe that we could uh, get some very frank and open recommendations from their side uh, and contributions from their side. Asma, you have the floor for the moderation of the of this session. Then there will be uh, an, there there will be an open discussion session during which we can collect your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eski. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again. I'll continue in Arabic. I'll continue in Arabic. So let me make a reminder again. You can use the interpretation channel for you to look for the channels. Thank you. Hello, I'd like to welcome you all. Today we will continue this event with a panelist of uh, Mr. Jami and Rashid at the same time. Uh, however, first of all, I'd like to introduce our panelist, Mr. Rashid al -Hamui. He is the uh, a foreign affairs uh, officer and a consultant uh, for various entrepreneurships in uh, Turkey. And he is um, one of uh, us in Engev. And uh, he collaborates with uh, Yaki at the same time. 
also we have Mr. Rami Sharaq, and I think he's one of the most known persons uh, amongst you. He holds a master's degree from Alibaba University, and he is an expert in the MENA region. He has an experience starting from 2014 in the uh, Turkish market, and he has very strong uh, familiarity with the context in Syria. He uh, has been working with various local and international organizations, especially when it comes to designing support pro programs uh, or programs for supporting uh, Syrian businesses in Turkey. Uh, I'd like to thank you both for your attending today and for your time. Let's start with a raising a couple of questions uh, to both of you and then hear from you. And at the same time, uh, I'd like to open the chat box for all the attendees to share their, their ideas uh, with us. Uh, we will have the, the floor will be open to all of you. Let me start with uh, asking a question to Mr. Rashid about the possibilities and the uh, the opportunities that started or has been opened uh, as the Syrians moved to Turkey. We know that the Syrians are uh, the, the Syrians have this ability uh, to uh, find new opportunities wherever they are. How would you like to tell us about this? Uh, thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to note that uh, the Syrians uh, brought opportunities that are relevant to the challenges they faced in the Turkish market when they started, when it comes to uh, importing ability to uh, a language barrier with uh, the communities, the Arabic speaking communities in Turkey that already existed before the Syrians moved to Turkey. There are other challenges that are related to uh, Turkish Syrian or Arab Turkish partnerships. So, since they entered Turkey, they focused on this aspect of um, focusing on. Uh, the communication and the channels between the Arab speaking markets and the Turkish market, um, whether in, when it comes to uh, exports, imports, or service provision. The Syrians have been able to uh, bridge among um, the communities and among the markets in order to facilitate the flow of services and products. Uh, the unique conditions the Syrians have been through because of the war in Syria and in addition to the challenges of uh, um, migrating illegally uh, or even legally, but it, the, the migration itself uh, posed further challenges and obstacles for them. And because uh, they are or they have been operating outside their comfort zone, it took them uh, extra efforts in order uh, to achieve uh, or build the basis uh, for them to continue, whether it comes to language learning or continuing a university education. Um, however, at the same time, they've managed to utilize their strength, uh, strong points and to build on that. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. Maybe I'll ask the same question to Mr. Rami if you'd like to add anything or if you have any further points that you'd like to add, maybe specifically when it comes to the points of a strength for Syrian male and female entrepreneurs. Yes, I'd like to add a couple of points, please. I believe one of the important points that we need to understand about the Syrian people in general is that uh, Syrians are very professional, especially when it comes to handcrafts. And the Syrians have been able, since they entered Turkey, to prove that and to revive various uh, sectors of uh, traditional production. Also, they managed to enter new sections that were uh, common in Syria, but they were not common in Turkey. And now we have uh, 
a, a huge community of Syrians who constitute the major consumers uh, of this product. Also, if I may, I'd like to add that Syrians, they brought also uh, the other Arab products uh, to, to the Turkish market. And this is also important because there is a large Arab speaking community in, in Turkey. We have also in uh, Southern Turkey, uh, uh, we have various businesses uh, that have managed for the first time in their history to access new 13 countries. And it is because of the presence of Syrian uh, workers and Syria, Syrian entrepreneurs. Uh, the Syrians have utilized the network of connections uh, in the MENA region and brought that link between the Turkish businesses and, uh, the, and this network. Uh, the, their connections range or span from um, east to the west uh, in, in the MENA region and outside. And it's an added value for the uh, Turkish um, finance uh, and uh, production sector. I believe this is the measure added value. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rami. Uh, let me ask you another question, please. We are talking about Uh, what you've said help us understand how uh, important it is to uh, or what's the importance of having the Syrian workers and Syrian entrepreneurs in, in Turkey. But at the same time, there are major challenges uh, that they face. These challenges, no doubt, affect their aspirations and affect uh, their work. And this is what we would like to focus on uh, now. Can you Tell us more about this. What are the major challenge, challenges that Syrians face and how does it affect their businesses? I think this is a question that is still valid 10 years after the Syrian crisis, uh, though it might be a little late to answer it, but I can summarize it in two major points. The first one is, the Syrian businessmen do understand that the uh, culture or the environment uh, of businesses in Turkey is definitely very different from that in Syria and in other Arab countries, especially when it comes to taxes. Uh, we have a large number of businesses established by Syrians. However, it's still not very clear uh, for for many others, uh, the details of the legislations and the taxation system in the market. Uh, many of the businessmen and women are still completely dependent in on the um, savings uh, to invest in uh, Turkey. They are still unable to completely benefit uh, from the banking system here uh, in order to expand their investment directly by themselves. Because, and it is a challenge, of course, uh, the, the challenge lies in the lack of understanding or comprehensive understanding of how to best utilize the banking system in Turkey in order to expand the investment. Uh, these are the major two challenges uh, that uh, Syrian businessmen and women uh, face in Turkey. Let me go back to Mr. Rashid. I'd like to ask you, uh, as a mentor and as an active person uh, who has collaborated with various uh, Syrian businesses, uh, in your opinion, how do you assess uh, or what are the major obstacles uh, the Syrian businessmen and women face? This is the first part of the question. And the second, uh, based on your communication with the civil society and their major programs, uh, how do you view or do you see that uh, 
that efforts are sufficient to support Syrian businessmen and women to overcome those challenges and obstacles. Uh, let me start with answering the second part of the question about the civil society programs. To be honest, the majority of the programs are well designed, uh, carefully designed, and aim at meeting the needs of the Syrian businessmen and women. However, the gap is still uh, there when it comes to the awareness um, or the level of in informing about these programs. We, we are talking here about uh, the need to uh, have exerted efforts between various parties uh, from the Syrian and Turkish communities at the same time in order to um, further inform about these programs and about the ability to benefit from them. And second, we need also to um, better analyze uh, the failures in providing these services. The majority of the uh, businesses are still unable to access those programs. The problems that Mr. Rami noted uh, about um, the legal aspect and the access to finances and that it, it's still there and it could be solved through uh, better raising awareness and better informing about the channels that would enable Syrian businesses to get uh, that support. There, as I've mentioned, many others are unable to, they don't know that they can benefit from these programs. Uh, when they are provided with incomplete information, uh, they are unable to benefit or that would be uh, harmful to them. So they would uh, start uh, doubting or questioning the effectiveness and sometimes uh, the accuracy uh, of these programs and thus they they won't uh, continue working with them. Uh, so we need to be more careful. Uh, another uh, point, it's about the investment system in Turkey. The investment in general in, in, in the legal documents in Turkey, uh, uh, investors are considered as major uh, capital owners. Uh, investment does not include uh, entrepreneurs who bring uh, limited funding to set up, uh, for example, a small store uh, that is personally owned. Uh, these small businesses are not included in the investment um, uh, legislations. So when uh, the Syrian uh, investors, small investors, try to access information about the Turkish law, uh, they find that they are unable to invest because the capital they own uh, does not um, reach uh, uh, the requirements that are mentioned in uh, investing law. If we manage to, uh, to solve this, then we will be able more uh, if we manage to solve this, we will be able to uh, bridge this gap and build the trust between civil society organizations and between uh, businessmen and women. Uh, and consequently, we will have a snowball effect as uh, those businessmen and women will uh, inform uh, their colleagues about it. However, if the status quo continue, uh, the trust will be further affected. and uh, the Syrians will be less and less uh, willing uh, to formalize or legalize their status and their work in uh, Turkey. Uh, they might continue to work uh, illegally. This will uh, lead to tax evasion consequently, uh, even if uh, not deliberately. Uh, 
So the role of civil society is, uh, an, imbo is an important role. However, what we need is further collaboration with all parties in order to um, raise awareness and inform about their work better. And we need also more um, careful approach um, or well thought approach uh, in designing these programs as uh, noted by uh, Mr. Rami. So if we um, bring all efforts together in order to find a solution, we definitely will be successful. Thank you very much, Mr. Rashid. So we understand that uh, the uh, legal structure in Turkey and the financial organization and the ability of uh, Syrian businessmen to make use of the uh, financial structure in Turkey are uh, some of the important points uh, uh, that hinder uh, the uh, more openness or development of the Syrian uh, companies in Turkey. Uh, Mr. Rami, if you have some uh, suggestions or if you think what can be added to the work of the civil society organizations for uh, the Syrian companies uh, to be more effective uh, to help them access uh, more uh, success in uh, Turkey. Right now, Syrian companies are successful in the Turkish uh, uh, community. This is something that we cannot ignore, uh, but how can we make that uh, even uh, broader? First, I think that we need to continue the uh, support, uh, not to stop the uh, technical support for uh, the business community, the Syrian business community in Turkey. Uh, we have a duty to maintain all the investments uh, that uh, uh, started uh, three years ago until today and uh, not to allow such a problem, a, a global problem like COVID-19 to uh, stop these businesses. A large number of those investments uh, closed down their businesses. And I think you, the statistics that you showed uh, the also showed that uh, a lot of these businesses have stopped. Unfortunately, the solutions are not sustainable. So the first point we need is that we need the continuation of the support and to seek that uh, these solutions be uh, more durable. The second point, civil society organizations with the support of international organizations, they need to uh, launch advocacy campaigns uh, to shed more light on the uh, b uh, opportunities that the Syrian businesses in Turkey have and uh, to convey a correct image for the policymakers uh, in the government, maybe to uh, make some amendments to the measures uh, and design some uh, incentive programs and support to programs by the government that will um, increase uh, the, op the opportunities that the Syrian business community can have and which uh, will increase their uh, exports to the Arab uh, world. We are talking about 400 million uh, 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 Arab users uh, that are making use of the uh, southern borders of Turkey. Uh, so I think this needs uh, international organizations can uh, draw the attention of the Turkish government to this point. The decision makers should be uh, should not learn about the competitiveness uh, uh, or the competitive uh, advantage that the Syrian business community knows. We're talking about a large uh, business network, which requires support and more advanced programs uh, more than the uh, consultant uh, uh, consultations and uh, training programs in order to make use of all the opportunities that are available i think this is a brief uh, uh, outlook of the recommendations as civil society organizations and international organizations, governmental uh, organizations, the private sector, whether Syrian or Turkish, need to take these points into consideration to continue and amplify the results of uh, this work. You said that the uh, Syrian uh, entrepreneurs and the uh, Syrian business uh, community are located in more than 40 uh, countries and their ability to access 
uh, Arab communities. This is a big opportunity uh, for the Turkish uh, market uh, for uh, the exports uh, for the Arab uh, uh, market, which includes more than 400 million uh, consumers. Now, how uh, you're talking about 42 countries around the world where Syrians are located, but the most important or one of the key uh, problem is the networking inside Turkey, because 70% uh, of the Syrian network uh, companies uh, get their uh, raw material from uh, the Turkish markets, but uh, a very low percentage sells for the uh, Turkish uh, within the Turkish market. So I think that there is something missing, or we need to do some work for the networking between the Syrian companies and the Turkish companies, or the entrepreneurs uh, net, uh, community in Turkey. So how do you see the networking between the uh, Turks and uh, the Syrians as someone who is very active and you are always present in these uh, the matchmaking events and workshops? Where is the shortcoming in all of this work? This is a very important point. I believe that we are still in the minimum in that regard. We are not, we're talking about no more than four to six percent of Syrian Turkish partnerships. So we have a huge uh, lacking in this uh, uh, regard. After 10 years of the Syrian presence, I believe in Turkey, I believe this is a very low percentage. If we want to analyze the reasons, uh, the lack of understanding of both parties, whether the Syrian partner uh, party or the Turkish party, uh, to understand the strengths and the uh, specificity of uh, uh, of each party, the lack of uh, assigning tasks between the two parties, whether the Turkish party or the Syrian party, in this partnership, uh, which is not allowing the success of this partnership between these two uh, business communities. Uh, here, I believe there is a role or a very important uh, program can be provided by local organizations uh, in uh, terms of networking and supporting the local businesses. Uh, so there should be more uh, uh, trust bridges to be built and uh, to clarify the relation between both parties. So we can uh, rely on the Syrians, for example, on their proficiency in certain uh, crafts, in certain uh, things, and their networking with the Arabic ma Arab markets. But we need also the Turkish uh, partner to uh, bridge the gap, the major gap in understanding the business community in Turkey and how to deal with the uh, taxation and uh, establishing a company uh, that can make use of all the opportunities available in the uh, Turkish economy, as well as the important role of making use of the banking uh, services. This uh, partnership model between the Turks and the Syrians will uh, generate uh, better uh, opportunities and results for the future, but we still need more work. Uh, this is also another important field that we still need to focus on. So as uh, Mr. Ram, Mr. Rami said, uh, the partnership between the Turks and Syrians, uh, between uh, Turkish companies and Syrian companies can be uh, tools that can be used uh, to help the Syrian companies to uh, overcome the uh, hindrances that they have. Uh, Mr. Rashid talked about uh, uh, legal issues that might take uh, a lot of time to solve, but uh, the partnership between the Turks and uh, the Syrians might uh, help to get uh, financing, for example, or to get uh, uh, to avoid some of or overcome some of the obstacles. Mr. Rashid, I'm going to ask you the same question. How do you see the shortcoming in networking and what do we need to have here before I receive questions of the uh, attendees with us? Uh, there are things that has to do with the uh, problems that uh, the Syrian businessmen are facing. For example, the Syrian entrepreneur cannot export or uh, sell uh, his uh, uh, products uh, for 
uh, Turkish companies without getting the financial grants that he can receive from the banks or from companies. We still have uh, some Syrian entrepreneurs facing problems with uh, some banks and uh, there are banks that uh, uh, reject to open uh, uh, bank accounts for Syrians, not credit accounts uh, for uh, Syrians. That's why we see that Syrians are searching for uh, exporting more than uh, uh, heading or targeting the local market. We need to study the market because there are some uh, sectors in the, the Turkish market that is completely uh, uh, full and uh, the Syrians should uh, look only for exportation without uh, targeting the market. But uh, uh, some of the problems that not allow Syrians to get into the local market are things that have to do with the problems uh, they face in dealing with the banking system here. Uh, looking at uh, how to solve some of these problems, we have a large number of Syrians who studies at universities and graduated from these universities. Now, if these people can find the uh, opportunities to uh, go to the strong uh, Turkish companies to have experience from the Turkish business market, they will be able to merge their knowledge with this environment uh, combined with the environment that they came from, which is the Syrian environment, to make a structure for uh, a really new entrepreneurship. Uh, the current Syrian entrepreneurship uh, environment is uh, relying completely on the experience they uh, brought with them from Syria. But with the coming generations who uh, graduate, graduated from Turkish universities, or if they have the opportunity to work in uh, Turkish companies, we will have people who have uh, better capabilities uh, with uh, better uh, integration uh, uh, capabilities and that focus uh, or, or try to focus on the strengths of both parties uh, to find solutions for the problems that both parties are uh, facing. So if we work uh, in a better way on the new uh, generations graduated from universities, we will have an entrepreneurship uh, generation that will overcome the problems that uh, uh, the Syrian and Turkish uh, entrepreneurship community are facing. Here we're talking about uh, people who studied uh, the uh, uh, Turkish law. They don't have a problem with the language. They also have friends who are Turks. Uh, they were their uh, friends at the university and they might be working at the same universities uh, or the same companies. They speak uh, uh, English and Turkish and maybe Arabic and they have access to those markets uh, to the current uh, or to the local market. If we are able to uh, access that, uh, think it will be very uh, important. I believe it is very important as well uh, to uh, listen to the problems that the Syrians are uh, facing uh, and uh, the programs that the UNDP is doing is getting into the core of these problems. We still need to hear about these problems more. And uh, there is another important point, which is the participation of uh, or the engagement with the Syrian business community in the development programs. Uh, we have uh, plans in terms Turkey, for example, the 2023 uh, vision, and uh, there are some imper other imperatives that will come. And when we uh, talk, uh, say, for uh, here, for example, that some of the southern uh, provinces in Turkey exported for the first time outside the Turkey. So we are talking here about uh, that even at the governmental level, they didn't have a planning to export to 13 countries. So what will be the result if there were a plans uh, so the Syrians who are uh, working there can achieve those uh, plans. I believe this will also uh, help uh, in that. When I'm saying that the uh, engagement of Syrians to achieve uh, these goals, it means also mitigating the difficulties they are facing and uh, trying to uh, uh, overcome any obstacles uh, they have. I believe this is something very important, uh, which is the engagement of business uh, uh, men in uh, the planning phase. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Let me open the floor for the people with us. If you have a questions, you can write them on the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, speak. Uh, or if you have ideas uh, to uh, present, you can do that. On the chat box, can I hear people questions, please?
رح استنى شوي كمان اذا عندكم اي اسئله بالعربي بالتركي بالانجليزي احنا موجودين We will wait a little bit uh, to write your questions if you have any questions in the three languages uh, or if you have any inquiries We have a raised hand ما عم شوف الايه المرفوعه استاذ رشيد اذا فيك تساعدني ما منو طالع لي هون مين الاسماء الرفائيده ها اوكي استاذ سمير السلام عليكم أستاذ الكرام. Hello everyone, thank you, Miss Asma. Thank you, Mr. Rashid and Mr. Rami. أستاذ فاضل، أنا تلمت من تحت إله طبعاً. أستاذ فاضل وذو خبرة وباع طويل ما شاء الله. I know Mr. Rami. I learned from his experience a lot. I'm sorry about the noise that is coming from outside. I just have a comment. Uh, we have a main uh, problem, which is uh, the language problem uh, or the language barrier. Uh, whenever we work on that, uh, it remains uh, sometimes in some uh, uh, some of the bureaucratic uh, uh, issues that we deal. And uh, thanks to the government, uh, they provided a lot of facilitation for our uh, work from uh, uh, the advice to support uh, or to uh, about the legal uh, support as well. But I just want to focus on the language uh, th barrier. Uh, I will speak about my personal experience. Uh, I can say I am. Uh, I can use uh, the language about fifty percent. But I look forward to have. Uh, to, to be able to use the uh, language 100%, to be able to uh, uh, to know my rights, uh, go to uh, governmental departments, and to deal with the uh, with Turkish uh, companies as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am glad to see you here because you were with us in the training, so I am glad to see you. Uh, Ms. Izgi also talked about the importance uh, of the uh, language trainings for the businesses, and Mr. Samir is now uh, talking about his personal uh, experience as well. If you have any comments, Mr. Rami and Mr. Rashid, Mr. Rashid please go ahead. That's right, the language uh, issue is one of the most important barriers uh, businessmen are facing. In general, Syrian uh, refugees in Turkey didn't feel that uh, they have to learn the language 100% because they were able to communicate with each other. And we found that uh, some people in the beginning were managed to open their businesses without learning the language. But at a later stage, everyone uh, discovered that they need to learn the Turkish language to communicate with the community around them. Not only the uh, the spoken Turkish language, but also the business language and uh, the academic uh, language. So some of the programs uh, that are provided by some parties, whether the government or uh, UNDP, they were uh, very good. And right now, after COVID-19, people have started to uh, be more uh, accustomed to uh, online classes or online uh, trainings, but I believe that we still need to see more of that. Is you just raised your hand? Now, now I hear you, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, ask uh, Mr. Elidan, uh, what would be his suggestion for to learn tur Turkish? I mean, what should be the way? Because we are trying all the ways, <laughs> all the modalities, public education centers, blended learning, online learning, everything. <laughs> so what would be the, it's really important. I mean, the, uh, it shows also that we actually don't reach our goals. I mean, we are doing something, we are contributing uh, to something, but, it's not enough. So, I mean, in terms of the plannings, uh, it should be helpful if you can share your ideas, your suggestions. It could be even 
like for example in i think england they have some sort of a volunteer program uh, turkish people and uh, not for, of course they're english people <laughs> and <laughs> refugees migrants come together spend some time just to practice their languages it's not something that you uh, write and learn but it's more the practical way for example yeah. this could be also another way just um please share us with yeah of course before this uh, i would like to um just remind that uh, as i have the opportunity that in give start a project uh, arkadash in which we come to, i mean we have Turkish people and Syrian people coming together and uh, our team, Engave team, um, a girl also, she's um, like supporting the program, like every day she's there and they are talking together in, Tur in Turkish. And Ustad Samir, if you can open this project, Ustad Izgi, I don't know if you've heard the Arabic translation or not. So Mr. Samir, if you can uh, join that, that will be good. So I don't know if you listen to the interpretation, but uh, Ms. Izgi is asking if you have any recommendation or any uh, advice, because we are trying different modalities to help the Syrian businessmen and entrepreneurs to learn Turkish. If you have any uh, suggestion, please go ahead and let us know. If you have something on your mind. Mr. Samir, do you hear us? I saw that. Uh, when when I when you're saying businessman, I'm not a big businessman. I'm, I'm a small businessman, of course. Uh, I learned. I met some of uh, others, and I see that uh, the language is very important factor in our work. And if there are any integration programs uh, to meet with Turks, that will be very useful. That idea is uh, really good because this will help us uh, to communicate with the Turks. So you mean a program where we can bring together Syrian and Turkish businessmen, right? Is that what you meant? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Samir. Thank you for your uh, intervention and for being with us. I mean, I'm not sure of the translation, by the way. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Shami, can Rafa Ido? Said Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad Shami. Hi, Hello. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank the UNDP, this, uh, the Turkish government, and the INGEV uh, organization for this uh, important uh, event. Uh, very quickly, of course, uh, Mr. Rashid and Mr. Rami provided a lot of information. Right now, I'm working, uh, of course, I'm working in Turkey for seven years, and I am. Uh, I have uh, a company for in, uh, consultation and uh, training, and all of our clients uh, are Arabs, and they are facing problems, the same problems that we are facing. So my first recommendation is uh, the uh, trade uh, uh, ministry or the Ministry of Industry, uh, they have all the data, not only for Syrian companies, but uh, all Arab uh, companies. So if those uh, ministries communicate with those businessmen who are not Turks, uh, to make uh, an event for those uh, businessmen. For example, I didn't receive any uh, phone call from the Turkish government about the problems that uh, I'm facing in this uh, country. So if there is an event for those uh, people to see what problems they are facing directly, that will be useful. Another uh, suggestion, uh, for, uh, for example, to have the authority responsible for the banks in Turkey, uh, the banks are uh, dealing with the non-Turkish companies, not only individuals, they are not working uh, properly, uh, so they are losing uh, customers. So, so, for example, as someone uh, who uh, established a company and I want to uh, pay my taxes, uh, I went to one of the great major banks, uh, they didn't allow me uh, they didn't allow me to open an account, although the uh, Turkish uh, authorities requires me to open accounts in certain banks. I don't know why. Uh, I will put money 
uh, deposit money in the bank and pay taxes, but those banks are not allowing us to open again. So I think that the authorities should uh, have an eye on these uh, problems or maybe to have an event that will include the private companies and public com uh, private banks and uh, public banks with the Arab uh, customers to uh, have access to these banks and the opportunities from these banks. Another problem, for example, people who are coming from the airports to Istanbul, if there are some uh, advertisements to tell the ad uh, investors before you go to the investment for example go to this department or to that web website to get information about investment in this country because unfortunately there are problems that happen between arab investors and not only syrians they have a large capital they come to the country but they can't work because there are different laws uh, for example in the gulf states they don't have the uh, uh, social insurance they don't have taxes here they, they, it is a completely different set of laws for them so if they go to a certain department to learn about the laws uh, that will be useful and events like this uh, will be useful as well and i'm sorry if i took a uh, long Time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, for your intervention. Of course, all the ideas uh, that you, you have. Well, I just wanted to have an additional remark concerning the Arkadaş project. You already mentioned that, Asma, and I'm uh, sending the form using the chat box if you want to get registered for Arabic native language or Turkish native language, Arabic speaker colleagues of ours, if they want to support us. So at 8 p.m. every Sunday we meet on Zoom and there's a direct message. Please fill in this form to reach us, to uh, provide us support. Uh, so I wanted to share Ingev's initiative. Thank you very much. Do you have any further questions on or comments before we uh, conclude our session? Yes, I'd like to comment on what Mr. Muhammad said. Uh, first, I'd like to thank him for uh, his intervention. It was really important to note that there are major problems related to establishing uh, investments and new businesses in Turkey due to the different legal systems. And in various reports of our uh, um, organization, we've noted that we are facing problems when it comes to paying the taxes. We are willing to, the, to pay the back taxes. However, uh, we're facing obstacles. Uh, knowing what taxes should we pay and how to pay it is a problem. It's, it's not easy to figure out. So it's not about willingness or readiness. It's about knowing how to and where to. Uh, so we need to make sure that the information is accessible, that the process is accessible to, to Syrians or to foreign investors in general. Um, the banks where um, Syrian businesses are allowed to open uh, accounts or allowed to pay taxes should be clarified and, uh, form and formally notified of their obligation to collaborate with the Syrian businesses. Some of the banks, for example, requested uh, from those investors to uh, add as a wadi'a, as uh, an investment account, a high amount of money that weighed uh, around 100,000 uh, Turkish liras. So all of these are problems that the Syrian businesses are facing and uh, they are being challenged with. So first of all, it's about accessing the information. The second point, which was also raised by Mr. Muhammad, it's related to lack of understanding of the repercussions or the obligations that uh, a business owner uh, is obliged to do. Uh, for example, 
when uh, a new business is established, the business owner should be notified through an SMS, for example, that contains a link, uh, a, a link at, uh, on the website of the uh, Ministry of Industry or Ministry of Trade or Ministry of Finance, where a form is available in various languages, in Turkish and in proper translation into Arabic, uh, where uh, all of their obligations are clarified, their rights and their responsibilities. Uh, this step uh, has not been done at all, and I believe if it's taken, it will be uh, massively in, important and of a huge impact uh, on the clarity of the information communicated to the Syrian business owners. Um, I believe uh, the ministry uh, can provide that, uh, and it would be much easier for all the parties. Uh, so better communication with Syrian business owners is definitely uh, impactful. Uh, we know that the ministry is trying, however, um, the, the level of communication uh, is not um, as it should be. And it is of vital importance in order to overcome all of these challenges. Thank you, Mr. Rashid, for your comments. I believe that uh, we came part and for being here ASG, I would like to pass you the word for the closing actually I have also one comment uh, to sure. for uh, Dr. Muhammad um, the thing is uh, in Turkey Minister of Trade or Minister of Industry are not really that visible I mean before the the, the companies the, the the visible part are the chambers or for example Union of Exporters so these are the, the other, like more close to the private sector, not to the government, but actually it serves this to the same thing. I mean, just relaying the information, handling things if you have, if you are facing challenges, learning some regulations, anything. But since, as I, far as I understood, I, you have also limited interaction with them as well, or they don't provide, for example, uh, information in different languages. Um, you feel some sort of a distance from the, the governmental institutions or all, all over the, the, the regulations or uh, legal framework in Turkey. So maybe we can also work on that, or at least we can also recommend to the, the local partners that we have uh, to do that. Um, so this is one comment that I have. Uh, I think one more person, Tariq Ali, would like to have a comment. Mr. Tariq, what I'd like to say, perhaps it's not very relevant to what you have been discussing. It's something, uh, a new topic. May I continue? What's the topic of your comments? Hello, everyone. First of all, I am Tariq Ali. I am a consultant and a coordinator of the education project uh, in Ankara. During my work here, I've been responsible for the training to provide Syrian businesses uh, on how to identify uh, possible qualifications for them to hire. Uh, this has been through providing theoretical and the practical training for them. And during the implementation of that project, we faced several obstacles. As you know, all of the projects we conduct uh, in this field, uh, face many obstacles because they have very limited budget, for example. Uh, however, it does not mean that we don't have uh, now proper uh, qualified people However, due to the limited programs, we don't have uh, wide access. Uh, our partners and the stakeholders we work with, they provide their services and we coordinate the services they provide with uh, those who would like to enter the market. As far as I know, if we have better mapping of these qualifications and with the businesses at the same time, it would be uh, much more easier uh, to link between the two and uh, 
to better match what's required in the market by the businesses and um, the qualifications that seek to enter the market. Uh, this could be through uh, coordinating with both international and uh, local uh, organizations. Of course, uh, I hope that this is something that we can work on in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sadek, for your comments. Any other comments by Isgir Rami or any one else, we, we still have time to do that. Yes, I think we need such a database. However, uh, currently it's not easy to, to access. We are in need of such collaboration. And yes, in fact, I agree, the role of civil society uh, or one aspect of the role of civil society is to inform Syrian businesses about the qualifications available among the Syrian community. Uh, the ILO aimed at uh, facilitating such a flow of information among Syrian businesses. However, the problem is as I said in the very beginning, the lack of information about the existence of such programs. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. We don't have any more questions. We don't have any more comments. Thank you everyone for your attendance. Thank you for your participation, Mr. Amni, Mr. Rashid, for your valuable input. And I'm really glad that I am here with you again. Now I'll give the uh, final comments to Ms. Iski. To uh, to conclude, I keep this. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Shukran, shukran lakum, shukran lakum, Akhi Sadr Rami Sharraq. Thank you for uh, Jami, and thank you for you, Esma, for facilitating. Thank you, Rashad, for you um, constant uh, support, and we hope that the support will continue uh, in order for us to be able to develop our work. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm really glad to be with all of you here. I'm really uh, fascinated by your work. Thank you. Thank you. I think <laughs> the closing yeah. mark could be this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all our speakers, I mean, contributors, participants. I hope, I mean, uh, everything will be better. <laughs> uh, I mean, with all our support and also uh, contribution from your side. Um, we know it's the, the, the context is completely different, law, regulations and everything, and the business culture as well. Uh, but you have already managed too many things, I think, and um, with the support of uh, governmental institutions, NGOs, INGOs, um, I think we, we could do better. Uh, of course, we need to also address the, the, the problems and challenges of Turkish companies as well. Um, as you uh, might uh, also consider. Uh, so, I mean, um, my wish would be uh, to see uh, more engagement between the Turkish and Syrian companies, uh, more, I mean, um, uh, more visibility uh, for you in terms of in the local market, maybe, uh, and also to, like to explore Ex, uh, explore export opportunities uh, with Turkish um, companies. Um, I mean, since we are all in here and we are together, and I think we can achieve everything uh, together uh, with refer reference to the World Refugee Day. Uh, thank you again um, uh, for your participation and time. Uh, I don't know if Char or Akil would like to say something or Rami Bey or Rashid, uh, but thanks anyway. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. We're really glad to see you. We hope uh, that your work will get better and better. Thank you.